bull of Cooley had fought and killed Aleel's white bull, the victorious brown bull ran home with the leg of the white bull stuck onto his mighty horns. At the very heart of Ireland, by the majestic river Shannon, the bull stopped to drink. As he bent his head, the thigh bone of the white bull fell from his horn into the Shannon, creating a ford where, even at night, when the moon was bright, people could cross the river. became the main route across the River Shannon and a small community sprung up on the banks. To begin with, it was little more than a few farms and an inn, a place for weary travellers to rest and take refreshment, to tarry for the evening enjoying fine local food and music, and to sleep in clean, comfortable beds before continuing their journey in the morning. The inn was run by Marie, her son Bweed, and a boy she had fostered as a baby. The baby's parents drowned while trying to cross the river on a dark, moonless, stormy night. Marie did not know his name, so called him Luan for the moon, whose light might have saved his family. grew up together like brothers, laughing and play fighting and getting into all sorts of trouble. Bweed, the stronger and darker of the pair, was always the instigator of their pranks, while Lewin, the paler, thinner and cleverer of the two, put in the hard work and most often took the blame. story takes place, both the boys had grown into handsome young men. Loon knew the course of the Shannon by heart and took on the responsibility of guiding travellers across the river. He knew where there were rocks under the water, where there were deep pools and the places where the water ran shallow enough to ride over on a horse or even wade across if you didn't mind getting a bit wet. spent his time helping in the inn, although he seemed to spend more time on the drinking side than on the serving side of the bar. He was especially attentive to ensuring the comfort of any lady travellers who should be passing and at any time of day he would take out his lute and play for their entertainment. When Loon came in, after making sure everyone was safely on their desired side of the mighty river, he would join in the music. When the two young men sang, their voices melted together so beautifully and their song was so sweet that everyone relaxed and, in a dreamlike state, went off happily to find their beds.
One evening in early summer, there came to the bank of the river a group of travellers on fine horses. Among them was a young lady called Estu. She was such a beauty that it was impossible to look at her without falling in love. She was on her way to marry King Na, the mighty but ageing warrior king of Ishnak. Loon came out to guide them across the river, but seeing that the lady looked sad and weary, asked, Maybe, my lady, you would honour us by coming into our humble tavern to rest. The light is quickly fading, and the lands to the east of here are not safe to travel in the dark. We have not far left to go. I am sure we will make it before the light is gone, said one of the party. They were just about to go on and cross the river when Bweed came out of the inn, laughing at a joke someone had made at the bar. His eyes fell upon a stew and hers upon him. to stop and take a moment to freshen up before we arrive at King Na's castle, said Estu. It looked as if the other travellers were going to object when Estu shook her head slightly. Her long golden hair shimmered like sunlight on the water and a tiny tinkling sound was heard. Not a word was said, but the whole party dismounted from their horses, handed the reins to Loon and headed towards the inn. Weed pulled his eyes away from his stew for a moment to look at his foster brother. Loon had never seen him looking so stunned. She has the magic, Loon whispered. Be careful, Bweed. But Bweed's face broke into a beautiful grin that Loon knew all too well. Bweed would be anything but careful. Sure enough, by the time Loon had put the horses into the stable and given them food and water, Bweed already had his loot out and his stew's party had decided that it would be a wise choice to rest there for the night and arrive fresh in the morning to meet King Na. Come, sing with me, brother, called Bweed, as Loon came in. They sang their most beautiful songs, and slowly but surely, the customers in the bar went happily off to find their beds. When Loon went to find his own bed, the only people left were his brother Bweed and the beautiful stew. Stu's party was ready to leave, she turned to Loon and said, Tomorrow I will be married to King Na, and I will be queen, but I have fallen in love with your brother Bweed, and if I must forsake him, then I will surely die. I have magic, and I give you, as I have given your brother, the power to transform into a bird. You will come to the castle every evening, and sing to the king until he falls into a deep sleep. Will you do this for me, Loon? In Loon's mind, the answer was clear. No, he would not help them to betray the king and the sanctity of marriage. But, as he opened his mouth to refuse her request, a stew shook her hair so it sparkled like sunlight on the water, and Loon heard a tiny sound like the ringing of a thousand tiny fairy bells. Yes, my lady, I will help you, were the words that tumbled from his mouth. All summer long, the two birds flew every evening to the castle, where they sang so sweetly to the king that he fell into a deep, contented sleep. Once he was asleep, Bweed shared a stew's bed. The king woke each morning, feeling fresh and rested, 
his head full of the beautiful tunes that the birds had sung to him. So it would have carried on had a druid not called to the castle. He whispered into the king's ear that the birds were none other than the innkeeper's sons and that Bweed was a stew's lover. King Na, though old and battle-worn, was still proud. He could not bear the idea of his beautiful wife loving another man. When the two birds arrived that evening, King Na was waiting with a catapult, and with a single stone he killed the bird that was Bweed and wounded Loon. A stew, true to her word, on seeing that her lover was gone, lay down and died, her heart broken. While Loon, still in the form of a bird, flew back to the river where he had showed people safely across the water of the mighty Shannon, and there he too died. The ford was ever after called Aha Loon, meaning Loon's Ford. A magnificent town grew around the ford, a town that is today called Athlone. Thank you.